Good evening, everyone, and on this most holy of nights, a warm welcome to your cathedral as we gather to celebrate the truth of Emmanuel, God with us in the Christ child. A special welcome to you if this is your first time here at the Abbey, and to you all gathered this evening on behalf of the chapter and community of St. Albans Cathedral. We wish you every joy this Christmas. May you know the hope, peace, and love of God in Christ for you, your families, those dear to you near and far. And as we pray for God's world, we pray those same gifts this night. As we gather here, we're conscious around the world of this great day being celebrated. So we join our voices, our hearts, our lives with God's people across the world, welcoming Christ. So as we begin, we stand to sing our opening carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Dear friends, as we meet to celebrate the birth of Christ, let us play, pray that God will bless this crib, that all who worship his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, may come to share his life in glory. God our Father, on this day your Son Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary for us and for our salvation. Bless this crib, which we are prepared to celebrate that holy birth. May all who see it and pray before it be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who is alive and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us call to mind and confess our sins. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. God of all healing and forgiveness, draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, listen. Your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, creator, saviour, and inspirer. Amen. What brought you here this most holy night? What did you come looking for? And what did you bring with you? For some, myself included, you come with a heavy heart after a recent bereavement. For others, you come with high anxiety as you wonder how on earth you will make ends meet and cover the bills. Or with a weary step after a year of health issues that have seemed relentless. Or perhaps you bring joy and relief that perhaps this Christmas might finally be more normal or perhaps you carry great eagerness and expectation as you spend your first Christmas in a new relationship. And all of these emotions and experiences serve to remind us that life is messy and complicated. And yet, that is all at odds with the world's obsession with perfection in every glossy magazine a large proportion of TV programs and much of social media. Wherever we turn, it all seems to be about a perceived sense of perfection. Who is the prettiest actress? Who has the X factor? Who is driving which sports car? And who has been seen at the most fashionable restaurant this week? 
But the trouble with all of this is it isn't real and they're certainly not perfect. There's a disconnect going on. There is actually very little reality in reality television. Well, contrast that with all of the, with this, with the birth of Jesus, because actually that is all about real life and a different kind of celebrity and priceless value, all where you least expect to find it. A new king found, not in expensive finery in a palace, but hastily wrapped in a shawl, in a cattle trough, standing amongst animal dung. Will we ever learn that to place our trust in anything other than first placing our trust in God is folly. It seems to have been a tough year in which we have really struggled to learn this lesson. What we thought was strong is actually very precarious and weak. The current economic landscape, high inflation, wide-scale industrial action, and the cost of living crisis. And political and royal turbulence are plenty. Tell us this. The things that we thought were strong, that we decided were strong, are actually precarious and vulnerable. And God implores us to see things so differently as we hear again this Christmas story, where concepts of strong and weak are turned upside down, where love and vulnerability and generosity and inclusiveness are shown to be the real currency of the kingdom, where a virgin teenage nobody is tasked with bringing God into the world, and where a stable off the back of a side street is the venue that distinguished visitors will flock to. Can the manger speak to us, the people of St. Albans and beyond, afresh tonight? What can this night offer to a world that is so cynical and so weary and so often looking in the wrong place for meaning? St. John the Evangelist tells us that this night the word is made flesh. This night the world becomes the place where God is actually present, the place in which God becomes embodied. In other words, this is not some forgotten planet in a far-flung corner of an isolated solar system. This is the very place in which God chooses to dwell and to reveal God's self to humankind. So the countless deaths in Ukraine this year are of supreme significance. They are the deaths not only of God's beloved children, but also of his beloved sisters and brothers whose human life he begins to share this very night in Bethlehem. God's is the first heart to break when a precious life is taken. God's are the first tears to fall, and it is God's despairing we share when we contemplate loss and pain in our own lives as well. Yes, this night the word is made flesh, but it is such vulnerable flesh, the flesh of a newborn baby, tiny, naked, and utterly dependent. God comes not by intimidating force or by great might, but as a little child. This is how God shows us what it is to love one another. It is not to bend one another to our own will. It is not to coerce one another into a pattern of behaving and thinking that is really our own. To love one another is to trust one another. It is to place ourselves 
in one another's hands. And love needs allies in the world right now. If firearms are ever to be finally consigned to the history books of humanity, if poverty is ever to be driven from these shores, and if hope and opportunity are to flourish in the place of drug use and gang violence, then love needs spokesmen and spokeswomen, advocates and activists. Love needs you and me. Tonight we affirm and reaffirm our commitment to love's cause. These are uncomfortable truths to contemplate in the cozy warmth of Christmas night, hard truths about the life of our society, about its huge wealth and its grinding poverty and the growing gap between the two, about society's limitless potential but at times it's utter hopelessness, it's excessive confidence and it's cringing fearfulness. Yet if the birth we have gathered here tonight to celebrate has nothing to say to the poor, the homeless, to the weak and the vulnerable, then I don't think it has much to say at all. But we must also remember this vulnerability is not restri restricted to the Christmas cradle. The manger does not hold the word made flesh for very long, for the word grows and grows to mature adulthood. 33 years pass, and the day comes when that mother cradles her son again, this time his lifeless body in her arms as she wipes the blood and sweat from his face and weeps over him. And then, and perhaps only then, do we discover the significance of this night for our broken lives and troubled times. For we discover that just as the wood of the manger bears Christ's life to the world, so does the wood of the cross also bear Christ's life to the world. Glorious life, life unending, life in all its fullness, life as God always intended it to be. Because of the life that begins this night, death has no ultimate power over the children of St. Albans. It has no power over the children of Ukraine or over orphans in Africa. Or, or, or over any child of God in any place. For this night, heaven is once more joined to earth and God comes to dwell with his people and they with him for all time and beyond all time, full of grace and truth. This night we gaze upon his glory and we know it to be the glory as of a father's only son. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Giver of Life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in this holy night, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, there was no room for your Son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home, those who are refugees, and all who live in poverty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labour, brought your Son, the light of the world, to birth. Hold in your hand and bring comfort to all who are suffering, in pain or distress. We remember particularly today all those affected by the winter storms in the US. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, the angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for justice and peace in the world, and particularly at this time in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Yemen, and Palestine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven is come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand Tony Beecham, Gillian Howes, Tony Lloyd, Martin Warden, Evelyn Winnie, Yvonne Wood, and all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. To you, O Christ, word of the Father, we offer our lowly prayers and humble thanks. Joining our intercessions with those of your blessed mother Mary, St. Alban, and all the angels and saints. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This holy night the angels sang glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
made flesh, life of the world. In your incarnation, you embraced our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and glory be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who for the love of our fallen race humbled himself, and on this night was born of the Virgin Mary, by the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of the glory in the face of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, in whom we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with angels and archangels, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, 
rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Alban and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are our body, because we all share in one bread. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, I shall be.
Let us pray. God, our Father, in this night you have made known to us the good news of your Word made flesh. Through these mysteries, may your Son be born again in our hearts and lives, that our eyes may be fixed on him who is our Saviour, Christ the Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. May the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.